Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about two tropical disturbances with US impacts, as well as a major flood risk. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is Saturday, September the 11th, and what we're taking a look at here is it's, it's going to be getting very active out here in the Atlantic. So there's a several features. There's this what's now labeled Invest 94L down here into the, the Caribbean. This is going to continue lifting north northwestward. This is going to bring a major flood threat to Texas and Louisiana. We also have Invest 93L that's been labeled. That's just now coming off the coast of Africa. We also have this another feature down here just uh, east of the Lesser Antilles. That's going to continue northwest over the next several days. And by next weekend, this area could be making uh, some impacts off the Carolina region as well. Down here in the Central, Car uh, Central America, it's still active. And there's still there's going to be waves and waves of energy continuing to lift northwestward over time so let's get into all this so let's uh let's zoom into 90 93 l down here over uh africa this is a long ways away there's no threat to land anytime whatsoever but yeah you can definitely see it's going to continue uh shifting off into the west over time now that we got larry out of the way it larry's continuing to race it's rapidly racing at 48 miles an hour that's going to bring all the blizzard like conditions to greenland over you know starting tomorrow into into tuesday so once now that larry's gotten out of the way it's not going to be influencing the mdr region that's why it's been completely shut down and taken up a lot of the energy now it's not going to be there it's going to allow the tropics to really start to become active in a big way so Let's let's uh, zoom in to this feature down here near the uh, near Texas. It's going to be we got hurricane hunters going out tomorrow. Going to be actually flying into the system. It's got an eighty percent chance of development. They're going to see if we, they can actually label this a tropical depression as early as tomorrow. Uh, and then all indications are this continues lifting off northwestward over time. And it's a slow moving system. And yeah, we're talking about significant rainfall amounts to Texas and uh, Louisiana Gulf Coast regions as we've got those two tropical systems coming off the coast of uh, Africa. And that little feature off here by the Lesser Antilles, it's not even labeled yet, but it will be. And that's the one that's going to be actually continuing northwestward and probably going to be impacting the Carolina regions <laughs> in about a week or so. So, man, things get starting to get really active. Let's say, let's zoom into uh, 90, 94L here. You can definitely see a lot of the first initialization of all the models are pretty much coming together. This thing's coming to Texas. It's not expected to be a big storm whatsoever as far as wind intensity. As you can see here, as early as tomorrow, maybe even this, uh, Monday, it could be labeled a tropical depression or even a possibly tropical storm. It's yet to be seen how, you know, if that coast off the coast of Africa, if that gets named first, it'll be Nicholas and then then the next one's Odette, you know, so they're both have an 80% chance of developing over the next, uh, you know, two, two days. So it just depends on which one actually gets named first, because I think both of them actually get named. But this one will continue lifting off into uh, the northwest over time, spreading deep tropical moisture into Texas and a major flood, uh, flood risk is going to be setting up over an extended period of time is even as early as Sunday going into Monday, going into Tuesday, going into Wednesday, going into Thursday. So this is we're talking about an excessive amount of rainfall coming into Texas. It could still be off the coast even 72 hours from now. And look, even four days from now, it's just possibly making land. So this could be hanging out over the coast, pumping in extreme amount of precipitation over an extended period of time. And a flood threat is a, is a dangerous concern uh, for those regions. But as we expand the view, here's the latest uh, EPS probability guidance uh, through the four to, four to seven day time span. 
Yeah, it's got that system. It's going to be arcing into Texas and Louisiana. At the same time, that little feature off here by the uh, the Lesser Antilles will, will be over probably the Carolina regions. This is next Saturday time frame, uh, September the 18th. While back here, there's Invest 94L uh, going to be approaching the Lesser Antilles uh, by then. And if we expand the view even further, uh, man, things start to get really active. Like I mentioned, Larry starts to get out of the way and it starts to really light up into uh, the Atlantic Basin. There's, uh, you know, as we extend the view, this area down here in Central America will continue uh, to remain active. This view is by next Saturday the 18th. Yes, we could have a tropical entity off the coast of the Carolinas. And with this ridge dominating for much of the United States, this could be another coastal hugger down up just fished, you know, propagating off the East Coast because it's only going to be allowed to go so far inland because of the ridge is going to be dominating for much of the, uh, the United States. But it's also going to be helping to and kind of enhance uh, the Atlantic Basin with divergence underneath. And that's what we're definitely going to be seeing uh, in the extended range. And, and even, even if we, you know, beyond beyond uh, what could be to come off the Carolinas, yes, we could be looking at possibly even another system down here in the Gulf Coast uh, even 10 days from now because it continues to remain active as the MDR region will really light up. So this is the busiest time of the season and things start to get active in a big way solely because the heat's going to be building over the U.S. And that is a dangerous concern of mine of things to start to get really active and not just active. We're talking possible U.S. impacts because a lot of this is going to be just steered towards the US like one after another. So it's gonna really start to get active in a big way, especially we're in peak hurricane season and we're going into October and there's definitely signs of also a La Nina uh, starting to come to fruition and that's gonna help shut down the, the, uh, the Pacific side and really start to amp up the Atlantic side with a lot less shear. So there's a lot of ingredients uh, coming together saying, hey, the Atlantic region is really gonna start to get really active uh, down the line. So let's zoom into this. Here's the setup over the US by Sunday and the ridge over the top. It has weakness underneath. It allows this trough, what's ever coming out of uh, the Bay of Campeche, gonna be, gonna be impacting Texas and eventually gonna be impacting Louisiana because once it starts to get closer to land, it's gonna feel the effects of this ridge and it's only gonna be allowed to go so far north and that's the concern as it's gonna fishtail and just kind of meander around the coast, taking advantage of the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico with a slow moving tropical disturbance. That is a dang dangerous combination for excessive heavy flash flooding rainfall amounts. And some of these could easily be double digits, if not upwards to over 20 inches of rainfall. So as we go through that Thursday time frame, the 16th, man, same way. I mean, this system looks to still be over Texas and Louisiana as the ridge will be dominating for much of the U.S. Any colder air is bottled up well to the north up in uh, Canada. That's on the 16th time frame. But yeah, as we go into next weekend, this, uh, this set, the 18th, Saturday the 18th, Again, we see weakness underneath. We probably have that system coming off in the end of the Carolinas as the La Nina starts to take shape for the Pacific Northwest starts to the only coolness in town will be entering the Pacific Northwest for with much cooler conditions. And yes, rainfall will be coming back in a big way for the Pacific Northwest as the first signs of a La Nina type pattern is really starting to come together. And that is what's expected as we go deeper into fall and especially the winter months. So let's, let's uh, zoom in to the uh, initial impacts of what we have going on for the United States. Here's the setup by the 13th and the 15th timeframe. 
There's the Invest uh, 94L that's going to bring all the heavy precipitation along the Texas and Louisiana Gulf Coast. And see these well above average temperature anomalies to the north over Oklahoma and Kansas. That's the impact of the system. As this continues trying to lift north, it's going to feel the effects of that ridge. And that's going to help squash it down and keep it along the coastal regions as that trough is well to the north. And that's going to bring some heavier rains into uh, northern parts of Louisiana, uh, uh, Missouri here, Illinois, northern parts of Indiana, northern parts of uh, uh, Ohio, as well as upstate New York. That'll be on like the 14th and the 15th time frame with very heavy rainfall uh, for those regions. As we zoom down into uh, what's happening for Sunday, there's the heavier rain as a marginal risk is uh, activated by the Weather Prediction Center down here by the coast. As the beginning stages uh, will start being the, this is just tomorrow guys, right? Tomorrow we're talking heavier rain starts to impact along the coastal regions of Texas and Louisiana. There's the trough up to the top where they got the heavier rains in Wisconsin as, as, as well as upstate New York going into Vermont, New Hampshire. This will continue down to the south and only amplify. Now we're talking a slight risk as this system will just get a little bit closer. We're starting to heavier rain, starting to impact more coastal regions into Texas as we have a marginal risk for excessive rainfall uh, well to the north into uh, Minnesota. As we expand the view and check out some of these totals uh, between now and just Thursday, September the 16th. So this is mainly starting tomorrow and it could be a Sunday, really starting to get its act together on Monday. Tuesday probably looks to be a dangerous flash flood, big day, probably a moderate risk for excessive heavy rainfall. But over time, we're talking easily six, 10, a foot of rain upwards to 22 inches of rainfall in some isolated spots is not out of the question with the slow moving system. So we're talking extremely heavy, excessive rainfall for the entire coastline of Texas and basically almost Louisiana, especially like into Lake Charles, unfortunately, is going to be in that zone for very heavy, excessive rainfall. Uh, you know over over time and here's the latest uh, gfs they basically implying the same thing this is mainly a coastal hugger here it's only going to be able to get so far north so yes yeah, you could be feeling the effects a little bit in uh, san antonio uh, in austin with maybe uh, maybe an maybe an inch of rain in san antonio maybe it, picking up a little bit in austin I'm not really expecting terribly too much in Dallas. You could be looking at South Dallas, maybe you know parts of East Texas. But again, this is mainly a coastal hugger event. You know, no question whatsoever as it's going to be feeling the effects of that ridge and going to be dominating the Texas Gulf Coast regions over an, a, an extended period of time, over a four, possibly even a five-day event. And 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 worst case scenario, if this thing just hangs off the coast as a tropical storm and then would be would be like basically hanging off the coast and then coming on then moving moving uh, northeast over time if it stays off the coast yeah we could be looking at uh, an even like prolific rainfall threat threat coming up so yes there's a lot of potential with this system this is a very dangerous uh flash flooding concern of mine uh growing up in houston i mean i know what these systems some systems are capable of along the coast with these dynamics that are coming together and that's why i've been very concerned about this system giving you plenty of time to possibly get ready for major impacts uh, from this system in a big way and all this is coming together uh, like I was thinking so down the line this is this is the impacts over Texas I mean you can uh, over the United States I mean you can see we're heating up in a big way this is the, te the temperature anomalies over the six to ten day time span you know there's there's the sign of a of a La Nina type pattern and really starting to uh, starting to take shape Notice the notice the wetness in the Pacific Northwest. That's in, that's indicative of that that La Nina type pattern. We start to dry out down here 
into the desert southwest the taps shut off for the monsoon we start to really start to shut the taps for the pacific type systems where everything transfers on the atlantic side and especially along the coast with the ridge over the top it just creates divergence underneath and we've got excessive heavy rainfall along the coastal regions uh just in this in the six to ten day time span and yeah if we expand the view uh, this just deepens even further. The coolness even locks in further. The wetness locks in further. The dryness kicks in as the eastern zones will really start to feel the effects of the La Nina and the ridge over the top. This is a dangerous setup for when you, you see this ridge over the top of just these this, these systems pinwheeling uh, towards the United States. So this is a concern of mine. And this was highlighted in my, my hurricane prediction type setup as the 500 millibar pattern will be stuck. The Southeast Ridge over Canada will be stuck and the highest, uh, you know, most highest impact time of the season, which we are in now in September and October. So I do feel, I mean, we've had seven impacts for the United States over 13 storms last year was 11 total with a very active season we could probably surpass that unfortunately with this with this dynamics really starting to take shape as we go into the heart of the hurricane season for the next six weeks so let's expand the view by next Saturday yeah this is a probably a good possibility with that ridge over the top with convergence over the neath that possible system out here now westward, west and the Lesser Antilles will continue to lift northwest over time. And by next Saturday, that could be setting up along the Carolina coast with another possible slow moving system. And this could easily probably be near or even riding up the coast as we go into next weekend. So yeah, definitely things to really start to get really active in a big way. Here's the rainfall amounts over the next 10 days. I highlighted 10 days because it picks up both tropical disturbances and it picks up the rains that are coming back for the Pacific Northwest. So you can see we dry, start to dry out down here into the desert Southwest. The rains will start to come back for the Pacific Northwest. The heavier amounts will be well to the north with that trough well to the north all week. And then the heavier rains will be along the coastal regions with these that first tropical disturbance and then the possible next tropical disturbance coming in to the Carolina regions areas by next weekend. And this system could possibly kind of elongate along the coast <laughs> as we go deeper into next weekend. So things start to get really active in a big way. So definitely stay with me. I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video uh please uh, leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after storm